Krishna Hare Krishna 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 Hare 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 Rama 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 Hare Hare Krishna Hare Krishna Krishna Jai Om Vishnu Pad Paramahamsa Prabhakachari Ashurdar Shri Srimad A.C. Bhakti Vedanta Swami Maharaj Prabhupada Ki Jai Iskan Founder Charya Srila Prabhupada Ki Jai Jai Om Vishnu Pad Paramahamsa Prabhakachari Ashurdar Shri Srimad Bhakti Siddhanta Saraswati Goswami Maharaj Prabhupada Ki Jai Namacharya Srila Haridas Thakur Ki Jai 
Prem se kaho shi Krishna Chaitanya Prabhu Nityananda shi Advaita Gadad Har Shivas Ari Gaura Bhakta Vrinda Ki Jai Shri Shri Radha Krishna Gopu Gopuna Samakun Radha Kun Giri Govardhan Ki Jai Shri Mayapur Dham Ki Jai Shri Vrindavan Dham Ki Jai Jagannath Puri Dham Ki Jai Ganga Mai Ki Jai Yamuna Mai Ki Jai Bhakti Devi Ki Jai Tulsi Devi Ki Jai Nanta Koti Vashna Vrinda Ki Jai Shri Harinam Sankirtan Ki Jai Grantaraj Shimad Bhagavatam ki jai, Samaveda Bhakta Rinda ki jai, Gaura Premanande, all glories to the assembled devotees, all glories to the assembled devotees, all glories to assembled devotees, all glories to Sri Guru and Sri Gauranga, all glories to Prabhupada. <coughs> Narayana Namaskritya, Naram Chaiva Narotamam, Devam Saraswatam Vyasam, Tato Jayam Yardayat Nasta Praya Badreshu Nityam Bhagavata Sevaya Bhagavat Uttama Shloke Bhakti Bhavati Nashtaki Om Namo Bhagavate Vasudevaya Om Namo Bhagavate Vasudevaya Om Namo Bhagavate Vasudevaya Good morning. So today we'll be reading from Srimad Bhagavatam, Canto 6, Chapter 15, Text 3. Yata Prayanti Samyanti Shrota Vegena Balukaha Samyujante Vyujante Tata Kalena Dehena Yata Prayena Samyanti Shrota Vegena Baluka Samyujante Vyujante Tata kalena dehina Yata prayanti samyanti Shroto vege na baluka Samyujanti vijujanti Tata kalena dehina Yata prayanti samyanti Shroto Vegena Baluka Samyujanti Vyujanti Tata Kalena Dehna Tata kale na dehina. Sam you jante vi you jante Tata kale na dehina Tata prayanti sam yanti Tata kale na dehina Money do you want to try? Yata samyanti samyanti Shrota vegena baluka Samyuyanti vishyuyanti Tata kale na dehina Anyone from an jum? Okay Tata yata 
just as prayanti move apart samyanti come together shrota vegena by the force of waves balukaha the small particles of sand samyujante they are united viyujante they are separated tata similarly kalena by time dehinaha the living entities who have accepted material bodies translation by his divine grace ac bhaktivedanta swami shri prabhupad o king as small particles of sand sometimes come together and are sometimes separated to the force of the waves the living entities who have accepted material bodies sometimes come together and are sometimes separated by the force of time <clears throat> purport the misunderstanding of the conditioned soul is a bodily conception of life the body is material but within the body is a soul this is spiritual understanding unfortunately one who is in ignorance under the spell of material illusion accepts the body to be the self he cannot understand that the body is matter like small particles of sand bodies come together and are separated by the force of time and people falsely lament for unification and separation unless one knows this there is no question of happiness therefore in bhagavad gita 2:13 this is the first instruction given by the lord dehinosmen yata dehe kaumaram yavanam jara tata dehanti praptir deras tatra namoyate as embodied soul continually passes in this body from boyhood to youth to old age the soul similarly passes into another body at death the self realized soul is not bewildered by such change we are not the body we are spiritual beings trapped in the body our real interest lies in understanding this simple fact then we can make further spiritual progress otherwise if we remain in the bodily conception of life our miserable material existence will continue forever political adjustments social welfare work medical assistance and the other programs we have manufactured for peace and happiness will never endure we shall have to undergo the sufferings of material life one after another therefore material life is said to be dukaliyam ashashvitam it is a reservoir of miserable conditions om gyana timarandasya gyanan jana shalakaya chakshurin militam yena tasmay shri guruve namaha shri chaitanya mano bishtam stapitam yena butale swayam rupa khada mayam dadati swaparantikam vande ham shri guru shri yuta parakamalam shri guru vaishnavam shra shri rupam sagrajatam sagana ragunatam tam tam sajivam sadvaitam savadutam parijana sahitam krishna chaitanya de एवं श्री राधा कृष्ण पादान सहगना ललिता श्री विशाखन वितामस्ता हे कृष्ण करुणा सिंधु दीनबंधु जगतपते गोपीशा गोपिका कांतरारहा कांत नमस्ते तप तक छन गौरांगे राधे वृंदावनेश्वरी विश्वबानु सिद्ध देवी प्रणमामि हरे प्रिय वंशा कल्पत्री विश्चा कृपा सुंदिबे वच पतिथान पावने बियो वैष्णव बियो नमो नमः जय श्री कृष्ण चैतन्य प्रभु नित्यानंद श्री अद्वैत गदाधर शिव सारि गौर भक्त वृंद हरे कृष्ण हरे कृष्ण 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 हरे 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 राम हरे राम 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 हरे हरे सो देयर इज टू टाइप्स ऑफ जर्नीज the journey of self discovery and then the journey of becoming a service dog <laughs> being a service dog there was a i was at the hallway in, in babo park and there was this group of uh, young people and they were walking their dog and one of them said that uh, we we should make a movie out you know the journey of him becoming a service dog it made me laugh you know so instead of studying about self realization they want to study of how a dog becomes a service dog <laughs> kali yuga right so shilo prabhupad and in the shastra he always mentions that families they're also compared to straws in the river they come together for some time and then 
throughout uh, the force of time where the waves it separates. So similarly, our family relations are like that. When I ask people in book distribution, what motivates you to get up in the morning? 90 plus percent of them will say my family. So people, they want to serve one another, but Srila Prabhupada always mentions that these are temporary and uh, you can say they don't last very long uh, relationships. And Srila Prabhupada, he was giving a lecture and he told the gentleman that family attachment is the greatest impediment. I was uh, trying to get this couple to take a book. I said, excuse me, I have something for you. And he said, no, both of my hands are full. You know what he had in his hands? One was his girlfriend, and then the other one was a cup of coffee. <laughs> so I said, you can let go of one. And then he said, I can't. You know. So it made me think of how strong our attachments are. Not even just to... Not, not for our family, but even our relationship sometimes. And I remember watching a lecture, and it was about Queen Kunti's uh, prayers. What is Queen Kunti's relationship to Krishna? She's the uh, aunt. aunt. But Srila Prabhupada, he makes the distinction that this relationship, it's not spiritual. There's no relationship in the spiritual world between uh, auntie and a nephew. So Queen Kunti, she was praying, she was asking Krishna to please separate or cut off my ties with my family. And she had two families, Srila Prabhupada explains that. Pandu was the husband's family, and then the Vrishnis is the father's family. And, you know, Arjuna is an eternal associate, um, Arjuna is an eternal associate of Krishna. But she's also saying separate these ties. So I thought that was really amazing because, you know, all of us want a relationship with someone, but these relationships, they have to be, you can say, within the rasas in the spiritual world. And Chanika Pandit, he said there's four enemies in a family. Do you guys remember what they are? Okay, a wife that remarries, a dumb son, a beautiful wife, and a father who is a debtor. And I remember um, Balaram Prabhu, he was reading the verse about how even if the parents have a son that is unlearned or you can say a devotee, they still want a child like that. And so <laughs> it made me realize how it is Kali Yuga. And even if the son is, you can say, not very learned, they're willing to even have a son, then not having a son at all. And I remember there's two prominent uh, pastimes. King Vena, he was also in lamentation. He wanted a son, but he couldn't have a son. And when he asked the Brahminas, his uh, minister, they told him, my dear king, in this life you're sinless. But due to your past activities, you're not a worried son. So, he, you can say he cheated, or he asked for a blessing that he would have a son. And who was that son? King Vena. Yeah, King Vena, he was a rascal, you know. In his childhood, he would kill his playmates. <laughs> Imagine a son like that. And King Unga and the other Brahminas, they were trying so hard to reform him. But still, King Vena, due to his nature, he didn't change. Incorrigible. And what did King Unga do? He was so frustrated, he left in, the mid, in, the, in midnight. He didn't even say goodbye or anything. He was just so disgusted with his son, so he left. And King Vena, while he was ruling, the Brahmanas actually, you can say, uh, killed him by Vedic uh, mantras. And then another king was Dhritarashtra. When, so when uh, King Pandu and his two wives were in the forest, they, you can say, she was uh, pregnant. And at the same time, uh, Madri, the wife of Dhritarashtra, was also pregnant. So they were waiting whose son is going to come out first. 
because that that son will be the the king on the throne. Yeah, and then Kunti is this. Oh no, I'm sorry. Uh, what's the wife's name of Jitarastra? Uh Gandhari. Gandhari. Yeah. So Queen Kunti gave birth to Yudhishthir Maharaj, and then when this news reached Kunt, uh, Gandhari, she struck her her womb, and then it was, uh, it was explained that it was due to envious. Uh, enviousness. So when she punched her womb, a lump of flesh came up. And then it was considered a miscarriage. So Vyasadev came on the scene, and then she started questioning Vyasadev, you know, why happened to your word that I'm going to have sons? So Vyasadev said that my word will never become untrue. So he told her, get 100 pots, Put this. Uh, so before this, Vyasadev sprinkled some water, and it separated into 100 different parts. And then they put him in these pots, and he told uh, Gandhari, "Don't open these until after two years." So after two years had passed, they opened the first jar, which was Duryodhan. And he said, when they opened that uh, jar or vase, there was bad omens. There were jackals howling, vultures, and donkeys uh, crying. So they, they asked, what do these omens mean? So Vidura told Dhrita Rastra, these are bad. Your son is going to be the cause of destruction for your race or your family, so you should abandon him. And Dhrita Rastra was so attached to uh, his son, he didn't do it, even after the advice of Vidura. So uh, Vidura gave this uh, nice example. He said that from the scriptures, it's not a sin to abandon a family member for the family, and the family for the sake of a village, the village for the sake of a city, and the world itself can be abandoned for the sake of the soul. Amazing, huh? So, but still, Dhritarashtra, he didn't listen to the advice of Vidura, and he kept Duridhan. And then uh, Vidura also advised him that even if you abandon the son, you'll still have 99 other sons. But he couldn't do it. So you see the attachment. And... Like what uh, Dharma Setsu said, this subject of... The parents and the child is a very sensitive subject, you know. Sometimes, unfortunately, the child uh, passes away or leaves the body before the parents. So I uh, want to be careful with that. And Srila Prabhupada, he explains that Atma can mean the body, the mind, and the soul. And Srila Prabhupada explains that when one is in the bodily concept of life, Atma refers to the body. And when he's on the mental platform, atma can mean the mind. And when they're situated in the reality or the spiritual platform, atma can mean the soul. And I meet a lot of people, sometimes they know a little bit about Vedic knowledge or Vedic culture. And they say, oh, the atma. And I said, what does the atma mean? They said, the, the, the body. <laughs> so I said, the soul is actually the atma. And it depends on your understanding. And I remember I was distributing books, and I asked people, what do you know about the soul? And they pause. They don't even know anything about the soul. So I tell them that the soul is the most important part of the body, but we're not studying about the soul. So I give them a few verses in the Bhagavad Gita, and then they're so amazed by the knowledge in the Bhagavad Gita. And on top of that, I tell them that this Bhagavad Gita was spoken 5,000 years ago. So they're so... They're very, 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 very pleased to understand the knowledge in the Bhagavad Gita. And Srila Prabhupada, he was giving a lecture and he said, you should join Krishna's family. Right? Instead of, uh, you can say, being attached to our families here, we can be attached to Krishna's family. I remember reading the Krishna book and how wonderful their picnics were, you know, their adventure. Every day is like an adventure in the spiritual world. There's no, Prabhupada, he would say, there's no factories there. <laughs> there's no factories, there's no hard work. I met a young man yesterday, 
And I gave him a garland. And he said, you know, I want to do this. I want to go around, collect flowers, and make a garland. And I told him, these are actually the activities in the spiritual world. And he said, really? And I said, yeah, there's no hard work. There's no nine to five job. We simply have to get, you can say, satisfy Krishna's senses. And one of those just to make garlands, prepare nice food stuff for Krishna. So spiritual life can be very, very mystical, magical. So I'll uh, give this nice story. There was a ticket person on the train, and he found a wallet. And within this wallet, there was a picture of Krishna. There was no identification or anything like that. So he asked the passenger, I said, whose wallet is this? And there was an old man in the train. He said, that's my wallet. So the ticket police, he said, how do I know it's your wallet? So the old man said, let me tell you my story. <laughs> So the old man, he said, when I was younger, in my wallet, I kept a picture of my parents. I loved them so much, they were the most important people in my life. And he said, uh, when they passed away, I had children of my own. So, well, before that, she said, he said, I had a, a picture of my wife. My wife was the most important person in my life. And then when she passed away, my children were replaced in my wallet. And then when my children, when they were grown up, they had their own children. So they were busy, so I kept a picture of their grand, of their kids, you know, my grandchildren. And then he said, throughout life, I always wondered who is the most important person in my life. So he said, I realized that Krishna is the most important person. He never leaves me. So the ticket master, he understood this is the man's wallet. So similarly, all of us, we're always, you can say, putting importance of, importance of someone in our life, whether it's our parents, our wife, our, our children, our grandchildren. But ultimately, that relationship that we're seeking for, uh, it's Krishna. So I'll tell a few uh, book distribution stories. In Bobo Park, everyone loves to take pictures. And where I post up, when I, where I set up, I'm by this hallway. So I started this new thing. Whenever I see someone taking a picture, I'll grab a Bhagavad Gita and <laughs> go like this. You know, so they'll see it in the background. So yesterday there was this uh, Indian family. They were taking pictures. And I was holding the Bhagavad Gita like that. And then the husband, he was saying, hey, look, a Bhagavad Gita. So they came to my table. They were from Gujarat. And then they said, we read the Bhagavad Gita in our language. And on top of that, to make me feel bad, they said, we're Brahmins. <laughs> so I said, oh, very nice, sir, you know, like that. They said, please uh, take this Bhagavad Gita and, and share this knowledge. So I gave them Bhagavad Gita in a set. And they said, no, 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 we only, we only uh, study the Sanskrit. So I opened the book and I said, we have the Sanskrit. So they were coming up with so many different... Uh, Excuses why not to take the Bhagavad Gita. And I pointed at their children and I said, you know, people from India, they're losing their roots, their culture, one generation at a time. So I asked them, did your grandchildren read the Bhagavad Gita? Did you read the Bhagavad Gita to them? And they stayed quiet. And then the dad, he said, we have to go. So they left. But a lot of people are actually, they're in a... They're too attached to, you can say, their family, and they're trying to live the Western dream. There was this couple, the lady, she said, can you see the future? I said, yeah. She said, what's the future? And I said, old age, disease, and death. And she went crazy. She started laughing, and she said, oh. And then her boyfriend said, we got to get these books like that. So Srila Prabhupada, he can preach to everyone, you know. Everyone wants to know this, that, you know, one day I'm going to grow old, I'm going to get disease, and ultimately I have to go on that fateful journey called death. And there was a devotee here, I forgot who he mentioned, but people always ask me on book distribution, how are you? So I started saying, my day is perfect, and it's just going to get better. 
And this man heard that and said, wow, I want to have a day like that. So I said, come here. <laughs> I, I brought him to the table and I gave him the, the, the set of books. And I said, after reading these books, you can also have a perfect day. And he knew, you know, I was sincere that, you know, I didn't want anything, but we wanted to give something to him. And that is uh, Krishna consciousness. There was this lady and her friend, they were walking by. First, the lady said no. And then a few seconds later, the lady came back. And I said, hi, did you change your mind? And she said, you know, when I walked past you, I sensed there was something about you, like an aura. So I said, really? And then she said, yeah, you seem to be very, very uh, sincere. What do you have, you know, in these books? So I was telling her how these books, they help you to become uh, stress-free, and it helps you to understand who you are and what the purpose of life is. And I said that the whole world, they're suffering from amnesia. Amnesia is when you lose a memory of who you are, your identity. So anyway, I was explaining these books to her, and she was very fascinated. So she took a set, and she said, I want to give these to my, my sister. And then she took a Bhagavad Gita, and she said, I want to give this to my daughter. And then she, before she walked away, she, she also mentioned, you know, there's something about you like that. So it made me realize and appreciate the devotees, you know. We're going out there, we're trying to, you can say, give them a chance to remember who they are and to become Krishna consciousness. Navina Nirad Prabhu, when he came here, he was giving a seminar on book distribution. And he said one of the best ways to ask a question, to get them to the table. So I started asking this question. I said, if you can guess which is my favorite book, I'll give you a free book. Everyone wants a free book. So they would point at Bhagavad Gita, they would point at SSR, they would point at Chan and Be Happy. And I would start laughing like crazy. And so it was so funny. And I said, it's a trick question. These are my, the, all of these are my favorite books. <laughs> so they say, really? And I said, yeah, check this out. So they get the books and then I do my thing. And then most of the time they'll, they'll get a book. So the books that we distribute, they're very, very nice. And we should try to give them to as many people as we can. There was a young Mataji. She said, oh, I want to get a Bhagavad Gita again. And I said, you had a Bhagavad Gita? She said, I had the same exact one. And I said, what happened to your Bhagavad Gita? She said, I lost it in a fire. So I said, here, nothing happens by chance. So I gave her the Bhagavad Gita, and I said, you have friends that like to read, friends that like to practice meditation? She said, yeah. So I gave her a set. And she said, how much for these books? So I, I told her their donation. She gave a nice donation, and she walked away. And a lot of people, most of the time, at least once every few days, Someone will say, I've heard of the Bhagavad Gita. I've always wanted to read the Bhagavad Gita, but I never had a chance. So I smile and I show them a set of Bhagavad Gitas. <laughs> I say, yeah, you can take one. And so they also smile and they said, thank you. You know, I've been waiting for, uh, to get a, my hands on the Bhagavad Gita. I was also distributing books and there was this Filipino family. And they asked me, where are you from? And I said, I'm from the Philippines. My family's from the Philippines. So I try to speak to them in my native language, which is Ilocano. And the grandmother, she actually spoke Ilocano. So I was talking to her in my broken uh, language, you know. And then she said, what are these books for? And I said, these books help you to have a peaceful mind and a steady, uh, and a steady mind. Wherever you find your life, uh, wherever you, f you may find yourself in in life. So I was telling them the books and how it, they made an impact on me. They said, what did you used to do? I said, well, I used to be in the nursing field. They said, what made you change? And I said, I wanted to help people in a deeper level. So they appreciated it. And in the same way, the grandmother, she said, thank you for the books. You're very polite, you know, and you're very well behaved. And I said, it's all due to these books. And I was laughing, and then the lady, she said, can I, the grandma, she said, can I give you a hug? 
And I can tell she saw me as like a grandchild or something, you know. And I said, yes. So I stood up and I gave her a hug. And then top of that, I said, I have one more gift for you. And I gave her a flower. And that was when she cried. She said, you know, I've never met anyone as nice as you. And then I was telling her, you can also develop qualities like these. I mean, who cares about me? But I was trying to glorify the books and what they can do. One of the questions that we ask also is, have you heard of stress? There was a man walking by. He says, stress, I have three kids. <laughs> so it reminded me of this, uh, of what Ch King Ch uh, Chitra Cates was going through, you know. So when we, I was also distributing books to this uh, firefighter. And this firefighter, I can tell he was stressed out. I said, excuse me, sir, we're giving books to people that are stressed out. He said, how did you know I was stressed out? And I said, the face is an index of the mind. So I, I pointed at the Bhagavad Gita and I said, you should read this every day, five minutes a day. Because people always say, I don't have time, right? That's the number one uh, reason or excuse. I don't have time to read and I told him, you can make time. And I said, you don't want to be stressed out your whole life. So I, sh I was showing him some verses and pictures of how the soul transmigrates from one body to another. And I showed, her the verse, I showed him the verse of how the soul can never be cut to pieces by any weapon, nor burned by fire, nor weathered by the wind, nor uh, burned by fire, motioned by water, nor weathered by the wind. And he was so amazed at that verse. And I said, I want to understand who I am. So I gave him a Bhagavad Gita. And then he said, how much for the books? I said, you can give whatever you like. We just asked enough to cover the printing. And I said, if you saw this at a bookstore, how much do you think this book will cost? He said, $50. And I smiled and I said, that's close enough, you know. <laughs> so he gave $40 for a Bhagavad Gita. And I said, you know, sir, you're such a nice person, and I want you to be happy. So I gave him another, the set, the Saptarishis. And he said, really? And I said, of course. So I gave him the books, and I also told him how we are suffering in this fire of samsara, birth and death, just to relate to his occupation. He took the books, he shook my hand, and he said, you know, I'm going to share these with my co-workers. And I said, please do. So we meet so many different people on book distribution. And a lot of them are actually searching, they're seeking for help. Whether it's from family life, whether it's work, whether it's stress, whether it's everyday life. And Srila Prabhupada, he says that when someone thinks that they're happy in this material world, they're in illusion. And when you ask people, how are you, Vijay, he would say, I'm good, right? That's the number one, I'm good. So these people, they're actually not good, they're suffering. And one last story. I was distributing books in uh, Balboa Park, and I met this uh, young man. He was going to school to become an engineer. And I asked him, why do you want to become an engineer? You know, Maharaj, he said, ask why five times. So I kept asking why, why. And ultimately he said, because I want to be happy. So I asked him, please describe what is happiness. And he basically couldn't say anything. He didn't know what happiness was. And I told him, happiness comes from the soul. And the soul's uh, happiness comes from connecting to the super soul. And I told him, uh, people... They may refer to that as the Supreme or God. So I was explaining to him the eternal relationship of the soul. Um, and you can tell there was something that clicked in his mind, you know. Like, I'm not this body, but I'm the soul. And I'm part, and I'm divine, um, and part of the Supreme Soul. And so I took a Bhagavad Gita and I handed, I handed it to him in his hand. When he took the Bhagavad Gita, I can tell he he was holding on to it very tightly. And then I said, do you have uh, friends? He said, yeah. And I said, you're holding your best friend right there in your hand. <laughs> you know, he and I smiled, you know, and he gave me a little uh, handshake. So he gave a donation and he walked away.
So people don't even know what is happiness in this material world. They think it's from friends, from family, from their workplace, from money, this and that, but that's not actual happiness. Happiness is when we reconnect with Krishna. Okay, any questions, comments, corrections? Amogalila Das Brahmachari Prabhuji. Just um, in the, uh, yeah, another small, it's a short one, but it's kind of far out, Sankirtan story. Um, there's this um, group chat, WhatsApp group chat that the Christian Life devotees have. They send all their pictures and stuff like that. And then usually when they distribute like, you know, bigger sets and they, or if they meet somebody kind of far out, they'll post it. But um, so my godbrother, uh, Ram Das Abhi Ram Prabhu, he sent um, a picture. He distributed a Bhagavatam set and a Saptarishi in a laundromat. So he met this guy in a laundromat. He was just doing his laundry, I think. Um, and he met this guy who apparently had met Srila Prabhupada when he was a young, a very young boy, like his mother or something, you know, brought him to meet Srila mm -hmm. Prabhupada. Um, and he even got to sit on Prabhupada's lap. Prabhupada wow. put him up on his lap. And then, you know, whatever, 40, 50 years later almost, he bought a Bhagavatam set and a Saptarishi and a laundromat. So I thought that was kind of far. You never know who you're going to meet. And I actually also had a similar experience. I was distributing books at this Target in Claremont mm -hmm. here. And I was, it was the December marathon, and it was a really, it was a really bad day. I tried, <laughs> going to, I was, tried going to Sprouts, and it was just super slow. So then I moved to this Target, and it was also super slow. And, um, but like toward the end of the, of the night, I was distributing books and it was really kind of mysterious how it happened. Um, this lady came, she was working at the target, this older lady, um, I mean, not super old, but then she, she, she was walking by and then she said, she said, Hare Krishna. And I said, Oh, Hare Krishna. And then she came up and she was looking at the books and I was showing her, yeah, I started kind of like showing her the books. And then um, she was look, She looked at the Bhagavad Gita. She grabbed it and she flipped it over and she, at the picture of Prabhupada. And she said, I met him. Hmm. And she said, I took my kids to meet him. And like, she said, like, some, you know, like 1973 or something like that. And I said, oh, wow, that's really, you know, far out. And then somebody else came up and they were kind of looking at the books. But I wanted to like ask her, like, who are you? You know, like, um, you know, what was your, um, and so I kind of, um, I think she said, I mean, Prabhupada wasn't here in 73. He was here in 72. So I don't know. must not have been here. But I, I mean, I don't know if she... Yeah, it, yeah, it was probably, yeah. But um, but anyway, she didn't really like... She didn't really tell... She didn't really say more because this other person came up and she's like, you know, mm -hmm. she was like, you know, give him a book. And I was like, what? And then she kind of like, she started walking away and I was like, Wait, no, no, go. <laughs> and then I never saw her again. But uh, she said she would come back out and, you know, whatever, get a book or something like that, but she never did. But anyway, kind of far, you never know who you're going to meet. Exactly. Thank you. Do you your money? Yes, a few times I met uh, people who were initiated by Shri Prabhupada, but then they stopped practicing. Mm -hmm. And yesterday I met a, a person, it was kind of crazy also, speaking of how people, how people are very busy sometimes. He said, I have four children and I have three jobs, so I have no time for myself. And I said, well, it's, it's very unhealthy to have no time for yourself. You have to at least have a moment in a day where you can just unwind, you know. So I gave him some books and invited him to our Krishna lounge, so maybe I'll see him. <laughs> Short story. Yeah, another time I was in Balbo Park, I was distributing books with one devotee, and um, this, this, you know, middle-aged man kind of he's he's i think he was on a he's doing like a power walk or something like that. And he was exercising and then he, he comes up and he says hari krishna and uh, we're like oh hari krishna <laughs> and then um we were talking for a little bit and then he said yeah i was actually it was initiated by Prabhupada." Mm. um his, his name is joe jyoti something it's like i forgot what it was it was like I looked it up one time. He's in the, he's in the, the, the yeah, he's in the list. I forgot his name. It's like Jyotish, it's like Jyotishatma or something, I don't know, something along those lines. But, 
Yeah, I also met one person in Oceanside who was just shooting books on the boardwalk, and he come and he's walking by. He's kind of a he looked like a far out kind of person, you know. But he was walking by, and then he he sees my table and he starts going, "Nama Om Vishnu Badai." I was like, "Oh, interesting," you know, because some people they say, "Oh, Hari Krishna," but you know. And so he he told me that he was in he was in Hawaii. he never got initiated, but he was in Hawaii, um, you know, like when. Siddha Swaroop Ananda was there and he, he said he was there for the whole thing, you know, when pro- anyway. So people just kind of floating around. There was this uh, Mataji yesterday. She said, I have one of your books from this author. And I was saying, oh, you know, what kind of book? And she said, it was a very beautiful book. She said, it's red and has gold lettering. And then she said she read the first page or something like that and said, don't read this book unless you read the other nine cantos. So she said, so I, don't, so I didn't want to read this. Uh, and she said, do you have any of the other cantos? And I said, I'm sorry, I didn't, I didn't bring the Shumad. They were, it was a Bhagavatam. It was a ninth canto. And I said, come to, our, come to our Thursday program. We have the whole set there. And she said, really? I, I ran out. Yeah. So, but she says she found it at uh, those free libraries around town. So whoever is distributing those books, keep doing it, you know. This is the second person that I met that found one of the, the Srimad Bhagavatams. The other one, she had a eighth canto. And she said, I, I want to get more of the, the, the sets. Yeah. So, yeah. So whoever is distributing those, um, keep doing your thing. There's one, there's one of those red, it's like just Prabhupada's, you know, just what Prabhupada finished. There's one of those just, if you go down Everts, um, and like almost like all the way, huh? Oh, he puts, oh, okay. Yeah, there's, there's one, like if you go down Everts, there's, a, there's one of those little libraries. Yeah, and there's, there's one in there. Mm-hmm. So, yeah. Okay, any other comments? Okay, thank you for your attention. Grant Raj Shumad Bhagavatam Ki Jai, Srila Prabhupada Ki Jai.